Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Phil. And today I'm gonna do a, a little explanation on how the active table generator works and what's, what's going inside. Uh, because it's not very clear for a lot of people what this thing does and how it can be really useful. So, uh, for this demonstration, I'm gonna uh, use the active table to isolate the music from Mario 1. Uh, it's not a perfect science, but usually it gives pretty cool results. So I'm gonna load my domains, I'm gonna select the RAM, pause the music for a second, and then I'm gonna start uh, the game real quick. Oh, wow. Would probably be better if I had uh, my button configured, right? Oh well. So I don't really need to play the game to do this. So what I'm gonna do is initialize and add a bunch of states you know, every few seconds. There's also a button to auto add the save states. So what this does actually is, this is collecting uh, dumps of the RAM domain. And uh, as you can see, I have like 15 dumps. I think that's fine. I'll stop uh, getting them. I'm gonna uh, set an activity threshold, something in this area, and then I'm gonna generate a VMD, all right? So as you can see, I have a VMD here. And now I can probably just break the thing, right? Well, let's try it for a sec. See? That was pretty instant. <laughs> so what's happening here? So what I did is I captured a bunch of uh, memory dumps. And in these memory dumps, there's a bunch of memory addresses that have their value altered every single time I do a dump. And in order to explain this, I've made a, a little drawing here using a grid. <laughs> Let's pretend for a second, this represents the RAM domain, all right? So there's a bunch of uh, memory changes that happen uh, every, you know, every frame when you play the game, right? So these changes happen, and as I'm, well, as the thing is gathering them, it is then able to uh, calculate how often they change. So here, I have the same drawing, and here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna capture a blast, another one, another one. You see the pattern going on here? So as it captures more and more blasts, there's more activity happening in this area of the memory. And this is, this is what the activity threshold is doing, right? So you, ha you have this, uh, this scroll bar allowing you to select how often the... How can I explain this? You know, the more often they change and the more... Um, you, t you, turn on the, you turn on the scroll thing, right? And uh, it allows you to capture the, uh, the addresses that change more often than others. I think that's a good way to explain it. And by default, it will also uh, exclude the uh, ever-changing addresses, which means some of, some of the addresses just change every frame. And usually these are counters and stuff used for the game engine. Not really for, well, in, in this situation, the music. Uh, I use the uh, active the active table to generate a VMD to corrupt the music, like this very particular use case. You wouldn't really want to capture the ever-changing addresses because you're gonna just break the engine and the game's just gonna die. So that's a quick explanation on how this th thing works. Um, I might have to redo this, uh, <laughs> this component of RTC at one point to make it compliant with 16 and 32 bits because right now the active table is only working in a in an 8-bit uh, precision, right? It doesn't monitor addresses that are 2 or 4 bytes long. Words used for uh, Super Nintendo and N64. It just monitors the stuff uh, in an 8-bit fashion. And what's also cool with this is that when you generate your active table, well, your VMD generated from the active table, you can then look at the pool and you can see the size of your VMD. So here, given the, uh, the threshold that I put, it only captured 28 addresses. 
and you can actually see all of the addresses that it captured. So this, in this range here, so I have from 6D4 to something like, let's say 6FD, right? And I'm pretty sure that if I was to make a VMD like this, from 6D4 to 6FB, and I just generate my VMD here, I would end up with a VMD that allows me to just mess up the music. I'm just gonna restart it, see? Let's see if that works. Eh, kind of. I mean, you get the idea, so you can pinpoint the activity happening in the RAM. I might have been lucky earlier, but... No, that, that worked. If I was using uh, the Glitch Harvester, I'd be able to sanitize this and uh, figure out which, uh, which actual value caused the music to change. Let's try that for a second, right? Yeah, pipe maybe. Hey, that's pretty slow. Well, I might have been lucky when I did it on the first try. But you get the idea. This is how uh, the active table generator works under the hood. It captures the activity of the addresses and it lets you generate a VMD based on said activity. So I, I hope this clears a few questions. Uh, might, I might have to do another uh, video about this at some point when I eventually remake this. But you get the idea. Have a great day.